Every year, a joyous celebration and time of reflection comes around. You may have heard it called Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year. In Vietnamese, and for me, we call it Tết. This is just a short vlog cataloging that one day, a Saturday in our new home and our new city. It also happened to be the eve of Tết. For the last few years, we have been celebrating Lunar New Year far away from our hometown of Sydney in Australia. We had been celebrating it in the UK, first during the pandemic in London, and then when we moved to Cambridge for me to start my PhD. Although London was super multicultural, I had some difficulties accessing more Vietnamese groceries or a wider Vietnamese community and locating some ingredients to make foods that I was more accustomed to being able to have at home. So this year, when we moved to Paris, I was determined to find things that would be closer to what I could find at home and would normally share with my family at this time of the year. This might sound really odd, but Lunar New Year for me is sort of like an equivalent to the Western Christmas holidays. At least this is the closest equivalent I can use to explain how odd it feels to be celebrating in a way from my family, my mother, and all of the traditions we would normally do during this time of year. So, this little video is a reflection into how this day of sharing and celebration unfolded for me this year, especially as we were still in the throes of discovering and making space for ourselves in this new place. First thing in the morning, I wanted to visit a Asian grocery store, and it's one I'd never gone to before, and funnily enough, it happens just to be called Paris Store. We'd gone to visit a few others, such as the awesome Tang Frere stores, which are mainly located in the 13th arrondissement, where there's a huge Asian and Vietnamese community. Uh, the 13th, however, is a little bit far away from us, uh, and as you'll soon see, this day was actually crazily packed with other things we had to do. Um, so back to Paris Store. Paris Store is located in Belleville, and oh my god, I nearly cried in the grocery store. <laughs> there were so many Vietnamese things, and even things that are really difficult for me and my family back in Australia to be able to get a hold of outside of Vietnam. On my way to grocery shopping! Food is such an important thing for me and one of the strongest connections I have to my heritage and my culture. It turns out that being away from it or being in a place where it isn't easy to access or another obstacle being like whether or not it's actually affordable to access those kinds of ingredients for years has had an impact on me that I'm only just beginning to understand. One of my goals for this year is to learn how to make more traditional Vietnamese recipes and foods uh, so I'll be sharing that struggle. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some struggles along the way and experiments on that journey with you. Um, part of that journey is going to be how I find a way to make a lot of these recipes vegetarian because Daniel and I are both uh, vegetarians. So we'll see how that goes. But away from this tangent and back to Paris store, oh my goodness, I literally found everything um, from like ban pho tui, which I haven't seen in years um, being in the UK, or I also found bang jung, which are these like beautiful packaged square rice cakes that you normally give gifts to family members and friends and you kind of exchange them during that. Um, so I was beyond shocked because I haven't seen them in so long. Um, and I've also found all these like Vietnamese pre-mixes for food like Ban Seo and Ban Gót um, and they're all available here. Um, so that was amazing. <laughs> if you're Vietnamese or you want to find like any Vietnamese ingredient, you have to come to Paris Store uh, in Belleville. Um, and you know, you, you might run into me by accident because I may be haunting this place from now on every week.
So uh, before we get into this like grocery haul, I just wanted to say a quick apologies for like the video quality and audio quality suddenly going down. Um, Daniel was just about to teach his cello student, so I really wanted to be quick and quiet before they came in and had their lessons in our place. Hi! I'm just going to do a quick grocery haul. We came back from an Asian grocery in Paris that we found. Okay, so the first thing are these chips that we bought because I love chips and I've never really had these before. Wasabi nori. And most I mainly excited for this one, which is apparently flavoured sweet and sour pickled plum. So we'll let you know how that goes. And if you've had them before, please let us know if there's any flavours we're missing or if we're eating it incorrectly. <laughs> Thing. <laughs> ah, this is the paste for my favourite soup, which is ganjur, which translates to sweet and sour soup. So we're vegetarian, so we won't have it with the fish that is in this label here, <laughs> but we'll have it with all the vegetables. More tofu, of course. And because it's Chinese New Year, we bought this paper that we're going to burn later tonight to welcome in the New Year and bring in some good luck and some happy offerings to the people up there, around there. Okay, there's a lot of rustling. Ah, my favourite vermicelli noodles, all the way from Vietnam. It's my favourite because there's a woman carrying like wheat there, and it's pink and it looks like feathers. Let's see. Oh, and of course, kind of Asian household would we be without heaps of like little ramen things. So this is my favourite. Uh, but we can we try this. I'm not a big fan of black bean, and it claims to be smoky black bean, but Daniel loves it, so we're excited to try it. Is this that it? Oh no, that's not it. This is the best part. Okay. Oh, the best part of this shopping trip. These noodles, which are essentially like fresh pho noodles, um, and they come like packed in this huge thing in France. And it's enough for three meals for us. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. After Daniel taught his cello students, we quickly had a bit of a late lunch and then moved on to a few more things we had to get on with during the day. Um, but they were all amazing, exciting things because they involved our beautiful friends and fellow artists here in Paris. At 3 p.m., uh, my dear friend Mei Meng, who is an artist, a curator, a filmmaker and a photographer, had a small um, art exhibition opening up. Um, she was presenting new experiments with photography that she'd worked on across the pandemic. Um, and they were shown alongside painted works by a local architect, Anna Duello, who is a close friend of hers. We didn't film very much because it happened to be in this really small, cute venue, which was also actually a restaurant. So. The restaurant owners had agreed to show their work during the day and they would uh, take everything down um, to make space for this kind of pseudo exhibition space where people could walk around and look at the space as if it were a gallery. And then the works kind of stay up on the wall so that um, it becomes a part of the restaurant decor for the next couple of weeks and you can purchase the works. So we learned that literally there is art everywhere in this city and any space can be a place to see new works and meet new people. Um, it was such a cute spot and if you're in Paris, and you want to see like any art openings or any little galleries, you can actually head into all these smaller venues that show work and everyone inside will welcome you. If you want to see more of May's and Anna's work, um, please check out their works in the description links below. I'll pop them there. Uh, and also please head to this restaurant because it's also adorable and the food smelled amazing because they were prepping it while the exhibition was going on. After this like little vernissage, which is uh, French for art or exhibition opening, we basically ran home and went straight to cooking up this like Vietnamese feast because some of our Aussie friends were coming over for dinner. Um, I didn't really film most of it because it's kind of, if you've ever made summer rolls and I'll make a video in the future kind of showing you how to prep for that. Um, it can be a little bit messy, so I totally forgot to film, um, but here's like a quick scan of the vibe. 
um, of how it all looked put together with some cute candles. Um, and then after dinner, um, as if there weren't enough things to do in this afternoon, we pretty, we headed out uh, as a whole group for something super cool and exciting. Um, so one of our friends, Toby Graham, who is this really cool singer, songwriter and musician, happened to be launching his new album uh, that night. And his album's called DNA Kisses. And we were heading out to go and dance and celebrate with him at this amazing venue called Alimentation Générale. Um, again, I'll pop the details down below if you're a musician in Paris who is looking for a venue. Um, it's a really cool place. Um, there's a bar downstairs and really cool lighting. And yeah, we were just going to see Toby launch this brand new album of really amazing music. So the night had rolled past and by the time we all departed after Toby's epic album launch, um, it was already 11.30 p.m. Um, Daniel and I made our way home and for a final breath of the day, we arranged everything we needed to welcome in the new year, call On Thou home and uh, kind of prepare our home to start a new Lunar New Year. I'll quickly say, um, if you don't know who Ong Thao is, uh, essentially he's kind of the spirit that lives in the hearth of your home. Uh, it's the spirit that nurtures and cares for the space in the home. I like to think that he lives in the kitchen <laughs> to make sure that everything's orderly, everyone's nourished and everyone has good well-being for the year. Um, and he kind of goes away for a week before the new year comes in. And then we kind of welcome him back for the new year on that day. So that is who Ong Thao is. Um, so here is a little moment that you can share with us as we reflect on the passing of a past year and moving into a new one. Thanks again for joining me on this reflection of celebrating Tet in a new place and getting to share this experience with so many friends, new and old. See you soon.